Just know I'm going to be staring into your eyes the entire time. The entire time? The entire time. Intense eye contact. The whole time. I'm not looking at the camera. Okay. You know why? Bet. Because we're having a conversation. Eye contact is key. Eye contact does not make me uncomfortable. Like if you're having a conversation with me, look at me. I do it. That's and maybe, I don't know if it makes them more that's uncomfortable. Hot takes from Terrence. That is. I think it depends who I'm talking to. Mm. Some people, it's very easy. Eye contact, it's fine. It's no big deal. Look away occasionally. Other people, you can tell it makes them uncomfortable, so then I do the eye flicker. Hmm. Interesting. I need to pay more attention to it now. Well, I think it's part of also a thought process, right? You're thinking, your eyes just kind of wander. Hmm. What's our rating for this podcast? Are we PG or PG-13? Are we R? Do we get... If we're PG-13, we, we get one F-bomb. Only one? That's PG-13. I think there's going to be more than one. Okay. I think it's fine. Okay. The R in Real T podcast mm-hmm. stands for Rated R. Let's go. <laughs> the Real T, capital R. Capital R. Welcome to the Real T Chicago podcast. I'm Jamie, a residential real estate agent, investor, landlord, and rehabber. And I'm Terrence, a residential loan officer, landlord, investor, fitness enthusiast, and Leo. And we are here to share with you the most interesting stories we can find in Chicago real estate. So if you enjoy wild stories, passionate discussion, real estate wisdom, join us every other Friday as we sip and spill the real tea of Chicago real estate. Did you know that Chicago was the birthplace of the atomic age? I thought you were going a different direction when you said atomic. But no. What direction did you think I was going in? I thought you were just going to say the birthplace of the atomic bomb. Oh, no, 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 no. Not the atomic bomb. I recently watched Oppenheimer. Great flick. But So you were just about to be like, you fucking liar. <laughs> like, we did not. Well, no. Um, fun fact about Chicago. Do tell. The first atom was split in 1942 at exactly 3.25 p.m. on the University of Chicago grounds. Really? Mm-hmm. Int- well, I mean, that kind of is then the birthplace of the atomic bomb. In a sense, yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, the Manhattan Project was... I'm speaking on this like I'm an expert in the subject. It was just a three-hour movie I watched. But um, the Manhattan Project was scattered all around the country. Wasn't one of the sites where you're from? New Mexico? Yeah. Probably. I have not watched Oppenheimer. That's what I've heard. Very long. Um, there is a statue commemorating the split. In Chicago? Yeah. Where? At the University of Chicago. Is it a sculpture? Yes. Is it a split atom? I looked it up, and unfortunately, it's kind of ugly. Really? <laughs> Which I feel bad saying. Oh, let's, let's look this thing up. Personal opinions are fine. This is my personal opinion. Exactly. And I apologize if anyone disagrees. It's not meant to be disrespectful. It just... I saw it, and my reaction was, oh... All right, Adam Split Statue, Chicago. Is that a face? Wait, what is that? I, I don't even know how to react. I don't even know what that looks like. It looks like a mushroom. Yeah, it did not scream nuclear atom to me. Um, I mean, it could be a mushroom, you know, mushroom cloud. But, I yeah, when you say split atom, I don't know what to picture. I'm just going mushroom cloud. Okay. Okay, that's what we're going with. Anyways, moving on. So what's on the agenda? Well, do you want to start with our two truths and a lie or with our icebreaker questions? Ooh, ladies first, two truths and a lie. Okay, my two truths, two truths and a lie for today are I've walked out of a showing covered in fleas. I've walked into a living room with over a hundred birds in it. And I have walked in on one of my clients with their pants down, taking a shit on the toilet. That one's true. I'm going to go the lie is the birds. The birds. Okay, story number one. Okay. Um, This is a mutual client of ours. Oh. (laughs) So we were touring many multi-units on um, the South Shore. And there was this one that we come up to. It's an quote-unquote open house for like three hours long. The agent's sitting outside in his car. Red flag, number one. Hmm. We go in. The first floor smells terrible. Hmm. We're already like, Ugh, 
Ugh. And we're like, okay, next we go down to the basement and it is creepy as hell. She wouldn't even go into the basement. Ooh, it was the kind like where the walls are stripped. You could tell there were walls or drywall there, but now it's only framing. Okay. There's no floor. Concrete's like beat up. Copper is gone, stolen. And I mean, it was a mess in there. So we're like not stepping foot in there. Okay, fine. We go up to the third floor and we look outside on the deck and it's covered in dog poop. And it's like, ugh, it's heartbreaking because then you just know some poor animal probably being neglected. So hopefully it was taken care of. (laughs) And there's an attic. And she's like, Jamie, should we look in the attic? And I was like, girl, this is up to you. I had absolutely no desire to look into this attic, but you got to do what you got to do something. And for a penny. So she starts to walk up the attic stairs, dodging dog poop as she goes. And she comes back. She's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And she's like, no, okay, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We go up. She finally gets all the way up. I follow her and I'm just like, oh no. Okay. We see it. There's like nothing there. There's more dog poop, whatever. In the attic. In the attic. Hmm. Yeah. It's kind of sad. So we leave. She's like, yeah, this is too much for me. And I'm like, I get it. No problem. We leave. I'm driving her back. We are on the road that takes you to Lakeshore Drive. So it's not super busy, but it's kind of busy. And she looks at me and she's like, Jamie, there's a bug on you. And I was like, what? And then she looks at herself and she has really long braids. And she's like, oh my God, there's bugs on me. And she's like, what do we, what do we do? What do we do? And I was like, okay, um, I'm just going to pull over. So I pull over and we get outside and we're like frantically like, fluffing our clothes off she had fleas all over her wow i got lucky i only had a few and it it's oh. just like you know you get that feeling on your skin where that you're you need just to burn everything crawling in bugs and um so i drop her off she calls me later that day and she was like jamie i had to throw my clothes away I got home and i immediately took them off they were covered in fleas i put mm. them in a bag i had to throw them away I wouldn't have even gone to the house. Yeah. So there's my one truth. This is why I'm glad I do what I do and I don't have to be out in the field like you. You sit behind a desk. You say that so judgmentally. You're so cozy and comfy and warm. We'll get into these things as the podcast progresses, but you should hear and see some of the things that I hear and see, which don't worry, I will share. Oh my God, I can't wait. (sighs) The things that go on during transactions that sometimes you don't know about, because I try to keep the peace. There are certain things that I won't tell you until we close. There are certain things that I won't tell the client probably ever, because there's a lot of problems that can be avoided Mm -hmm. if you just figure them out. But in the moment, you get a little pissed off. Sometimes people do things that, you know, you tell them not to do things and they do things. Sometimes it's, you know... Act first, ask for permission later. Terrence, you can figure it out, right? I don't know. Let me call the government and have them change their guidelines. They think it's just that easy. Yeah, of course it is. But again, I get to do it. I'm paying good money for this house. (laughs) That's true. I have $10,000 of earnest money on the line. Yep. I don't care if I just bought a new car. (sighs) Am I getting somewhere with this? Sore spot. Yeah. Very sore spot. How often does it happen to you? It's happened twice. So disclaimer, if you're buying a house, do not go out and buy a new car. (sighs) Okay, do you want to hear my second truth? I do want to hear the other truth. Okay. I want to know if I'm right. So this was also an investor client of mine. And we walk into a three-unit building, and there's four people sitting in a living room. And the smell Mm. is horrendous. We walk in. You're trying to be polite because there's people sitting in there. So, you you know, you can't just be like, so you're just kind of like smiling. You kind of do the nod at them. And then I turned. Terrence, there was a wall full of bird cages. I was wrong. You were wrong. An entire living room wall, like 
one foot by one foot bird cages. Oh, like individual cages. Individual cages stacked on top of each other, all the way to the ceiling and like as wide as the wall. Birds. So, all kinds. Like, I think mostly maybe parakeets. I try not to stare. It's a wall know. of birds. Why would you not? Because you get into these situations and you're like, what do I do? Excuse me. Um, why are there birds all over the wall? I feel like that's a conversation starter. I, yeah. I'd feel like you were rude for not mentioning the birds. Oh, who am I going to mention the birds to? Clearly my clients see that there's birds here. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought they were there. No, no, no. Okay. You were expecting this ex- to be the poop store. I was expecting the poop. Yeah, I was, so you thought true. it was going to be my client's okay. house. It was not. It was a It was a place that we were going oh. to view for them to purchase. Okay. So no, I'm not going to ask these four people sitting in the living room, excuse me, why do you have a bird farm here? I mean... Why do you think they had a bird farm? Bird fighting. Bird fighting? Bird fighting. No, that is not... <laughs> No? Okay. Can you fight parakeets? You could fight anything, I'm sure. You never seen birds fight? Yeah, but I don't think parakeets have parakeets have an aggressive nature. Not sure. Not like roosters. Not sure. I'm sure if you piss off an animal enough it'll fight. God. N- I mean I assumed they were just um breeding them selling and selling them. them. Or pet her- pet hoarding is a thing. That's true. But this didn't seem like that because it was only just this one wall. It wasn't like in the entire apartment. I have a couple bird stories. I'm not going to tell my other one today. Jeez. But Did your client put in an offer? No, mm. they did not buy that one. Mm. Because of the birds? For several reasons. I think maybe, yeah, the bird tenants being one of them. Okay. Oh, these were, these were tenants. I assume it's a multi-unit building. Okay. So, yeah, I would assume that they were renters. Oh, would not want to inherit those tenants. Mm-mm. Were they loud? The birds, I mean, not the tenants. They were little parakeets. I mean, I noticed the smell before I heard them. <sighs> okay, yeah, maybe smart. They didn't put in an offer. No, this building needed help mm. more so than... More than just the birds. Yeah. Wow. I know. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of disappointed it wasn't the client taking a shit. Yeah. I really could have seen that one being true. I do have a funny story about walking in on someone taking a shit, but it has nothing to do with real estate. I mean, you can't not now that you've said it. Don't Um, worry. I'll I'll wait. You remember Tony? I dated him many years ago. No. Did I know you at the time? I think I was probably dating him when we first met. Okay. But um, I was working at a bakery at the time, and he was the general contractor for a restaurant down the street. So he would I knew come, you were working at the bakery, yes. Yeah. He would come into our bakery to he would like buy a coffee and use the bathroom. And the lock was a little janky wanky. And um it was like if you would turn it, like if one person tried to get in, it would stay locked. But if maybe two or three people tried, it would shake loose. And um so I just I had to pee real bad there's only one bathroom for customers and employees and i like sped walk i was like gotta go and i just opened the door there he is pants down on his phone taking a shit and i i tried to close the door and his backpack got stuck and um but I wasn't going to stick around. I fucking booked it out of there. <laughs> and I went into the back. And everybody knows this guy. Maybe I shouldn't have used his real name. Um, it's out there now. Sorry, Tony. And I collapse on the floor. And I was like, I just walked in on Tony taking a shit. Mm. Like, I cannot go back out there. But let me ask the question, though. Was this the beginning of the relationship? No. We had not even gone on a date at this point. Oh, so this was this started it. This was the icebreaker. I brought it up a long time later. Wait, did he not see we it was dating. you? No, he knew it was me. Oh. But he was like, I actually really appreciated like how you handled that. The next time we saw each other, you just acted like nothing had happened. <laughs> you and I are very different creatures. That would have been topic number one. No. So... I feel like we know each other so much better now. We oh, yeah. Have. Oh, yeah. To make it fun. I wouldn't have done it in front of people, but yeah, 100%. Okay. 
real quick, two truths and a lie for you. Okay. Let's hear it. So they're a combination of real estate and non. Oh, I like it. Okay. Well, that's a spice it up and make it interesting. Yeah. So two truths and a lie. I have jumped off of a building before. Bungee jumping? Don't worry about it. I have jumped off of a building before. Okay. I'm going to, I guess, one of which we already know. I could come up with a new one. We just talked about it. I was going to say that I had a client buy a Tesla mid-transaction. Okay. I guess that one. Truth. (laughs) Yeah, but you don't know the lie. And I have swam with dolphins. I feel like the swimming with dolphins is almost such a common thing that people do on vacation that that has to be your lie. I've even swam with dolphins. I think I think dolphins is the lie. It is. Ha! Yeah, okay, fine. That's the lie. So, which which truth do you want to hear about first? Bungee jumping. Okay. Well, it wasn't bungee jumping. Oh. Oh. Um, I was having a bad day. No. Um, Parents don't joke about that. So in Vegas, I wanted something exciting to. Do. I wanted to go zip lining because I had heard that you can. Sh- I had heard that you could. <laughs> zip line like down the strip right. from one end to the other yeah turns out not really it's like the back area it's kind of enclosed and it's like one block long and i'm like that sounds kind of boring so i asked the concierge at the hotel i'm like hey i hear the zip lining thing isn't all it's cracked up to be he's like no you want to do something even better i'm like okay do tell he's like let's walk outside you see that building over there i'm like yeah it's really tall. You want to jump off of it? I'm like, no. <laughs> Are you scared of heights? No. Okay. I just like my life. So he's like, but you're attached to something. I'm like, okay, that's better. Not a parachute. I'm not just jumping into my death. And um, it's not a bungee jump. It's a, I don't want to, it, it's not a controlled fall because you free fall for 75% of the building. Then the cord that you're tethered to slows you down and you just stop. You don't bounce. So. So bungee jump without the bungee. Yeah. So I happen in Uber, go to this building. It's called the Stratosphere. Yes, I've heard of it. Okay. So it kind of looks like the thing in Seattle where it's a big tall tower with a little spaceship on top. Mm -hmm. The Space Needle. Yeah, that thing. Thank you. So you get to it, you're in the lobby, you pay your money. And as you're walking up to it, you can see how tall this building is. I mean, it's different from Chicago because in Chicago, it's tall building, tall building, tall building. This is in the middle of nowhere. So you can really see the, like how big it is, how tall it is. Is it the tallest? Do you know if it's the tallest building on the strip? It, oh, for sure. Oh, really? Okay. It's one of the tallest structures in the country. Oh, shit. It's over 100 stories tall. So okay. you get in there, you, you pay your money, you suit up, you get in this elevator. There's no windows. There's nothing. You just get in and there's like two buttons. There's one and like 110. So you push the button and we just ride the elevator straight up and you come out of the elevator. Who's we? Who are you with? Oh, I'm by myself, but um, it's oh. we like the group of people that God, are doing okay. the trip. Okay. So the elevator doors open and you're just in this big like 360 view of a saucer thing and you can just see a bunch of nothing because there's nothing else around you. And you walk over to the little door. It's like a, like a sliding motion sensor door like Walgreens. Mm-hmm. So you walk over to it and it just opens up and there's 110 floors that you can fall down. So you just take turns. They bring you into this little room. They strap you up. They yank up on it a couple times. They say, you get to go? I'm like, sure. Wow. I didn't go first. I should have gone first. I, was, I went second. So I got to see the other guy do it. And I saw he kind of got out there and hesitated and was nervous. I'm like, Psh, dude, head first. Just dive. So I get out there. And I have footage of it, by the way. I Because I paid like mm. $20 extra to borrow their GoPro. Worth it. Definitely worth it. Definitely worth that. Yeah, definitely worth it. So GoPro's on my arm. Did you hesitate? Not you at just- all. Not at all. Wow, I'm impressed. It was great. I would have hesitated. Oh, no, it was fun. It was like, you know what? Did you strap me up? I trust you. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was fun. Kind of want to do it again. I think it's like the five seconds before you jump. It's like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. For some reason, bungee cords I don't trust. But this thing you did? Yeah. How do you get down? Like, how do you... You jump off the building. I mean, then you start to... S- slow down so and then how do you dismount from your oh so good question so no it takes you to the ground oh so at about the are you i mean i wasn't exactly head up or head down head up i dove i dove straight off 
Um, I tried to dive head first, but the way that you're tethered in, it right. stood you up. Okay. So, and I don't know the exact floor, but I was kind of looking at the building and the ground and also out there at the same time. But the, I think it's around maybe 20, 15 ish is when they start to slow you down. It's fast. Like they stop you. Oh, okay. And Does then, your stomach do the thing where it's like, whoop, yeah. up into your, oh like, yeah. I like that feeling. Oh yeah. It's fun. And then you get to the ground and they unstrap you and you walk off. Well, go along your merry way. That's it. Grand old time. Love that. Okay. So okay, next, what was your other one? Oh, they bought a Tesla. We yeah. Don't... Tesla's a nice car though. It is a nice Tesla. Is that the one you saved? Yes. This is the one I saved before we even started this process. Terrence, what are the things that we should not do? I'm like, I'm glad you asked. I have an entire presentation I take people through. And I have a slide that says... That was going to be my question. Don't you tell people not to buy a car? I do. Right, it seems... Yes, I have my not do not do. Not that do's. asshole that I'm like, did you tell them? But. Well, to be fair, I have changed my slide it now specifically says car oh what did it say before do not take on any new debt oh. do not finance anything new mm. do not add any new trade lines to your credit report now i say car do not buy a car and it's it's because of him was that the first or the second it was person? the first oh and then the second yeah. guy did it even mm -hmm. mm. yeah that transaction died but this was about three years ago, back when the supply of Teslas were, I don't know if they're back up now, but the supply of Teslas were really low. So you put in an order and it took months and months for right. you to get your Tesla. So it was a situation where he had already put down a deposit and Terrence, I am waiting on my Tesla. I'm like, do not take possession of the Tesla until we close on your home. Does he have a choice, though, if your name is up and they're like, yo, your Tesla's ready, can you be like, nah, I'm good for a month? I didn't ask, but okay. I said don't. Okay. Right. You're like, not my problem. You want this house. Don't sign. I said do don't, not do, do it. Do not sign on that dotted do line. Do not do it. So we're in attorney review, ordering appraisal. Everything is going smoothly. And one day he just calls me. Tesla's in, bitch. Pretty much. Terrence, I know you said don't. But they called me and told me it was ready, and I just picked up my Tesla. I'm like, did you pay cash for it? Because if you did, that's fine. I don't care. No, no, no. I financed it. Oh. And the next day, I get the email because we, looking right at the camera for this one, monitor your credit throughout the entire transaction. So the inquiry popped up. Immediately. Yes. Now I needed to get a letter of explanation document the payment once i added the payment our debt ratio was too high to qualify for the house we were over 50 percent. for those of you listening debt to income under 50 percent for buying a house listen to your lender so and. and listen to your lender so and i called him i said hey unnamed person you don't qualify for this house anymore your debt ratios are too high and he's like what do you mean I'm, you remember the tesla that's why. Oh, so when you said no new debt, I mean do not finance a new Tesla. I told you don't take possession of the Tesla. But we're going to figure this out. So we spent a little bit of time on the phone. We had to play with some things. We had to pay off some other debt. We had to bring down the monthly payment on the house a little bit. Changes insurance. We got by at 49.99% <gasps> on his debt ratio. 50% was the limit for Flying the program he was doing. by the seat of his pants. Yeah. But, yes, Tesla almost took his house away. Tesla almost took, Tesla was almost it took worth his house it? away. Was the Tesla worth it? It was. It sounds he's, like, I mean, it obviously sounds like He's it was. happy. They're happy. We're friends now. Oh. Um, I still make fun of him. You should. He deserves that 100%. Absolutely. I'm, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm glad it worked out. Yeah. He's bought a couple extra properties uh, after that, so we're good. What what is what's the saying now? Get that bag, sis. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely got that bag. So And you too. Yes, I do. And you know what? Here's the thing. For some of the mistakes, I'm gonna call them mistakes that people make, I understand. Because they've never done this before. I do this every single day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if I blatantly tell you not to do it and you do it. That's on you. That is. But then I have to figure it out. Good thing you're so amazing. It's part of my charm. 
part of your charm. Once I get up the phone, I bang my head against a desk. But you know what? It's fine. We all have those moments. We do. And every job, right? You got those people where you're just like... People that you wonder how they get through life. Yeah. 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 I've, I've come to realize in my old age that there are some very, very, very dumb, smart people. Oh, the amount of stupidity. Every year I'm like nothing's gonna surprise me anymore people are dumb like that's just the way life is i cannot take you seriously don't judge me right now as you open up a carton of egg whites yep first of all they are pasteurized he's drinking them he's gonna drink the egg whites yes i am for those of you that are just listening The chug. He's chugging the egg whites. He's chugging them. No. I'm horrified. I'm refreshed. Mm. That was great. Thank you. They're pasteurized egg whites. I'm not going to get salmonella. What about the texture and the taste? As long as they're cold. They've been sitting next to a fireplace. They weren't ice cold. But they were still cool. Okay. And it doesn't have flavor. Weird. Like it, it's not, okay, it has a little bit of a taste, but it's not, it's nothing bad. You don't need to like wash it down no. with anything? No, there's You're no weird. You're not holding back a burp right now? Because no that kind of looked like it. There's no weird aftertaste. No, it's just, it's just a little thick. Oh, okay. But yeah. Yeah. It's a great way to get in protein. Okay. I'm going to use that to just gateway into our um, icebreaker questions. All right. Just, I feel like, well... We've gotten to know you a little bit better because some of your stories were more personal versus my... Yours were just about hundreds of cages of birds. I don't know what you want from me. So anyways, <laughs> you can go first. Okay. So for those that are listening and watching, how did you end up in Chicago? Oh, okay. Um, past relationship, like so many of us... Um, We'll leave it at that for now. Past relationship brought okay. me here after college, so I've been here just over seven years now. It's been seven? Yeah. Wow. I know. Sure, I've known you for five. Yeah. Jeez. Isn't that wild? Time flies. Mm-hmm. Pretty much our entire time in this business. Yeah, Terrence and I met our first years in the business. Yep. At a broker open house. Yes, I do remember that. Doesn't yeah. I got an email that's like, join us at this $5 million property in Lincoln Park. And I was like, wow, $5 million? How do you feel about that now? Oh, yeah. Now I'm like, let's bring it on, $5 million. <laughs> but, you know, first year in real estate, I don't think I'd sold anything. I was an assistant. And I was like, oh. And yeah. I remember being thoroughly disappointed by that house, too. For $5 million. I will tell you that in the last... Well, since I've been in real estate, level of excitement to go into a million dollar home has definitely gone down a lot. They don't impress me anymore. I, I always expected more. Yeah. If I walk into a house that costs seven plus figures, I expected someone to open my door, take my coat, cook me a meal. Like I just, I expect, I'm, I expected something from the movies, and then I walk in, I'm like, it's just a house. Well, we're in Chicago. I know, but I didn't know that before. Yeah. What what price point do you get a butler at? I don't know. I haven't been in one yet. I've never I met. Either. I've been in one with the elevator. In a house with an elevator? Yeah. I think it was ten million. Ooh. In Gold Coast. That makes sense. I I mean what's what's the payment on a six million dollar house? <sighs> well, on a six million dollar house I would put that payment just under fifteen thousand dollars a month. Okay. Yeah. Mark and I were looking on Zillow at just fucking wild properties. Some of these payments are like $60,000 a month. Mm -mm. That's mm -mm. a salary for a lot of people. Yes. More than a salary. More than a salary for a lot, for of, a lot of, people. of people. Are you one of those people that will sit there and look at houses that you blatantly cannot afford and say, you know what? I don't like those bathrooms. Oh, <laughs> I will judge the fuck out of property. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to buy that one. I don't like the way that, I don't like the way the stairs are light up. I don't have the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the taste to go tour Zillow. Doesn't excite you anymore? It doesn't. It's like you're working. Yeah. But I, I've always said, and I stick to this statement, 
that Zillow is the original thirst trap. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Isn't it? It is. Because you, you look at those houses and all of a sudden you just sit in your living room and you're looking around like... Mm. And then you keep scrolling. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, this one? Oh, this one's a little bit more. And then you're down this rabbit hole. And then your wife's like, what are you doing? We can't afford that. And then you go to your crappy little kitchen, your crappy little bathroom. <laughs> you're like, oh, we live like peasants. Okay, that was only one question. Next. Um, well, that's a very interesting question. Um, what has been your favorite home that you've ever sold? Oh, that's an interesting question. I'm gonna have to think about that actually. Okay. You put some thought into that. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to think about it because not to brag, but I've sold a lot of homes in my life. <laughs> Just kidding. I've been lucky enough to work for high producing agents. And so I've been able to see a lot of houses and help sell a lot of houses. Okay. Yeah, that's really hard to to pinpoint. Let me think about that. All right, you think about it. I have some easier ones. Okay. Oh, how many more do you have? As many as you want me to ask. Okay, let's go. Dream car. Ooh. Okay, the car I have my sights on right now is... I can't believe I'm saying this. It's kind of silly. The, um, the new electric Mustangs. I used to respect you, Jamie Book. <laughs> The SUVs? Mm, I have my opinions. First of all, a Mustang shouldn't be an SUV. Well... Second of all, it needs to have an engine. Okay, listen. Yes. That's one take on it. I was just driving one day, and I was like, what car is that? And then, I, so I'm like looking for a little emblem, and I'm like, Must horse? Horse? That's a Mustang. Horse? No. Can't be immediately google like mustang suv and yes the new i don't remember what it's called but that thing's slick i like it okay i am not on the electric train bandwagon um, or the electric car bandwagon why I you want the room wait what is your car right now it's not a hybrid no it's a gas burning mm, you hate the world love the world i I just don't like electric cars. I don't, they don't, I, I, they don't, they don't feel like anything for one. It's not about feeling. If I'm driving a car and that I'm paying a lots of money for, I want to feel good. <laughs> what else do you want it to do? <laughs> okay. Do you have one more? I will let you go. I feel like you're just itching the, itching to ask him. Okay. Um, what was your dream job as a kid? Ooh. Video game designer. Oh, there's some fucking whack video games. You could do whatever you wanted. I know. I don't know why I never did it. Do you play a lot of video games now? Yep. What's your favorite? Mm, well, okay, my all-time favorite video game is a game called Final Fantasy VII. It came out in 1997. There's been many iterations of it ever ah, since okay, then. okay, great. But, well, they've made movies of it. They've made Of the it. video game? Yeah. Final Fantasy. I'm trying to think back. Probably have never seen it. Okay. Is it about, what is it about in like 10 seconds? Oh, God. Um, crazy dude with magical powers. Oh, yeah. Nope. Haven't seen it. Till there you right go. Now. Okay. So anyway, that's my favorite video game. Okay. But. Um, next question. <laughs> oh, but I'm still talking about video games. I'm taking the reins back. Go ahead. All yours. Would you rather be invisible or fly? Invisible. Why? I don't want to fly. Where, where am I going to... What, am I gonna, what are you talking about? Where, gonna, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What am I going to do? Get hit by a plane? Get, You're not going to... You're going to fly hit, hit as high as planes? If I can fly, why am I not? Do you know how cold it is up there? Well, you told me. I, so you're gonna, <laughs> don't try to take the wind out of my wing. I'm not. You don't want to fly. You don't want to get no, places I don't. I be without invisible. having to like stop at red lights and like go through all the bullshit. Just go honk. <laughs> Fuck you. I know you have road rage. I've I have very it. bad road rage. Yes, you've I seen know. my road rage. So what if you could skip that road rage? It's fine. Sorry, I'm on Team Fly. <laughs> Clearly you're on Team Fly. No, I'm on... What are you going to do when you're invisible? Fucking creep on people? No, just be invisible. I can walk down the street invisible. I like going on walks. I feel like an old man. I like going on walks, but I also don't, don't like people. I'm going to stop the sentence right there. I just don't like people. So if I'm invisible... Work with me, ladies and gentlemen. I don't like you. Hate people. <laughs> so, you know, if it's if I'm going out for an evening walk, I don't have to worry about you know, 
Hey, good evening. How you doing? Sometimes you just want to put on your headphones and go and be invisible. That's fair. Okay, last question. Okay. Describe yourself in three words without using tall, dark, or handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Without using tall, dark, or handsome. Yeah, or any synonyms. Damn it. Um, intelligent, strong, outgoing. When I want to be. I'm invisible. We're playing video games. Okay, I would say those are all accurate. Thank you. You're welcome. That was a good question. Thank you. Because I really was going to use all three of those. I, I know. That is why I omitted them from the <laughs> options. Okay. Have you thought about the house yet? What house? Oh, no. I haven't had time. What are you talking about? We've been talking. I didn't know if you meant you were going to do it today or if this is going to be like your homework. It might have to be homework. Okay. We'll write that down. I'll take notes. You got another one? I like this. Um, the last one's kind of kind of boring. What's your favorite thing about real estate? So boring. I know. Okay, we can switch it. No, no, I got it. Okay, go ahead. The end. The end. The end. Of the transaction. The end of the transaction. Not when for I the no reasons that you think. When I have to talk to you anymore. When you can't mess anything else up, I'm happy. No, when people are happy about their result. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's my favorite part. That's always been my favorite part in this industry and where I came from because it's the exact same thing. Where did you come from, Terrence? Jamie Book, I came from the world of fitness. I was a full-time personal trainer for many, many years. You can find Terrence on Instagram. At Terrence the Trainer. Uh Uh-huh. Or (gasps) for all of your real estate needs, (laughs) at... The Titanium Lender. That's right. Titania. What's that song? Are you going to sing it? Go ahead. I, I lost the <laughs> tune I was going to, and then it left my brain. I'm bulletproof. There it is. Nothing to lose. I am Titanium. <laughs> exactly. Except for he is Titanium. I am Titanium. That's right. The Titanium Lender. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you got to separate them a little bit. Why you get too many people sliding into your DMs? If I say yes, but also yes, I do. Yeah, I'm not surprised. So I need to keep one a little bit more professional than the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's yours? My what? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> My favorite thing about real estate. Thank you. Um, I think that it is that every transaction has the same sort of steps, mm-hmm. same process you're trying to go through a b c d to get to closing but every trajectory is different Mm -hmm. you're gonna come across different problems different people different issues different solutions and so it's always different it's like it's we say this all the time never a dull moment in real estate literally never there is never once you think you have a solution to one thing Boom, something else Tesla. pops up. Yep. They buy a freaking Tesla. <laughs> or there's a leak in the ceiling. Or I don't know. So it's always interesting. I could never do a job where it's just the same every day. You go in. The 9 to 5, not for me. No? No. I even think about it sometimes. I'm like, what would I do if I ever left real estate? Could I just go get a job? I mean, I could, but would I like it? I don't know. See, I've already, I already have my, my retirement job set up. What is it? I'm going to work at Home Depot. No. <laughs> yeah. I am going to be that old guy that works at Home Depot the midday shift. Why midday? Because I go to the gym in the morning. Oh, of course. Okay. Should have known. So you get up, you go to the gym in the morning, you come home, you have second breakfast, and then you go work at Home Depot from like 10 to 4. Three or four days a week. Okay, that's not bad. So that's not a 9 to 5 where you're... Fine, 9 to 5. I would still do it. Five days a week? Yeah, that'd be great. Really? Yeah, because then, okay, here's here's why. You get the discount on all the tools and all the and all the fun things you can just take home, and I'm going to have a garage full of just brand new tools, and I'm going to have all... But you'll have no time to play with your tools because you'll be at your nine-to-five job five days a week. Damn you, look, I'm retired. You're not retired if you have a full-time job. I'll take time off. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to check back in with you and... Please. 25 years. 25? 20. 20. Okay, deal. 20. 
Yep. Putting it on my calendar right now. Okay. Watch. It's going to be a great retirement job. Hey, can you help me find the fertilizer? No worry, ma'am. Walk out here to the garden section with me. I will find her the fertilizer, put it in her cart. Have a great day. No stress. Fertilizer. Fertilizer. Wink, wink. <laughs> What's that song? You are terrible with this today. Um, It was a YouTube sensation. About fertilizer? Freda Fertilized. You have not seen the Freda Fertilized. I'm going to send it to don't you. don't know what is in your YouTube algorithm, but that is not in mine. I don't watch YouTube, but there are certain things that stand out in my life. And um, the Friday Fertilized is certainly a core memory for me. Okay. I'm curious now. Send it over. I will. I will watch I'll link it. it in the show notes if I can figure out how there to do that. There you go. Yeah. Well, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. We can link things. We can link things. Oh, that's exciting. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Realty Chicago. If you're interested in joining our community to lurk, comment, ask questions, or if you think you have a more interesting story that you would like to share, please find us on Instagram at Realty Chicago, on our subreddit, r slash Realty Chicago, or send us an email at realtychicago at gmail.com. And all of those are spelled R-E-A-L-T-E-A-C-H-I-C-A-G-O. Good job, Jimmy Book. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much.